This is really great. This is a certificate of authenticity. There's a lot going on here, and we're in rule number three. All of commerce is based on title. This actually has several versions of titles involved. The first thing is the heading for it. This certificate is awarded to Mike Goss and confirms that this MSO, or Manufacturer Statement of Origin, artifact is a true and original copper deck screw removed from the HRMS Mercure, a 856 Ocean wine sweeper, mine sweeper, excuse me, built by Peterson Builders Inc. for the U.S. Navy as U.S. hull number MSO-483 Agile slash Aggressive class, MSO transferred to the Netherlands in 1954. So this vessel was created and given an MSO, and the vessel along with its MSO was transferred to the Netherlands. Do you think that the Netherlands had to register it? Did they have to pay the United States a registration fee? Or did they have to wear the blue shirt on Tuesdays? Not at all, because they had the true and lawful title, the MSO. Now once the vessel sank, or was parted out, or whatever allowed those copper deck screws to be removed and resold, now they're telling Mr. Mike Goss that he's getting an original copper screw and they're giving it an MSO, a Manufacturer's Declaration of Creation, to go with the screw. Very wild. And especially since it starts off with a certificate of authenticity. So they're telling you this is a copy of authenticity, which then describes these MSOs and how they went and transferred and everything else. Basically, it's not worth the paper that it's written on because the whole thing starts out as a copy, right? But that's okay. It, it gives us a really clear view of what happens to title and where it went and what people were able to do when they had it. This is a form of application for registration. This is from the Commonwealth of Australia. We're in rule number three. All of commerce is based on title. Now, applications for registration are where we give up that title. But this one is really clever because there's a birthplace, there's a nationality, there's a name in full, which are those three points of contact, once again, those three contracts, right? But it gets better because we get to the usual place of, a bo of abode. The usual place of abode is listed as the marble bar. Typical for Australia, right? I guess if you're founded by convicts, you get the typical place of abode, usual place of abode to be a bar. Then next below that it says, now staying at the marble bar. Then he goes on, personal description. Remember that birth certificate where they had to describe this physical property that they're dragging into these waters of commerce? Same thing. But what's really cool is they required both a signature and a left thumbprint. And later on, we're going to actually discuss the mark of the beast. And there's a lot, of course, misinformation out there about what this mark of the beast is. But when I show it to you, it'll be really clear. And what's cool is that it doesn't just apply at the end times. This mark of the beast applies at any point in history. And it has applied the same way in the past at any point in history. And any time we have an application for registration, that's where you're actually giving up your title, is in that registration, that first application. And uh, on the application for a car loan or the application for a house loan, those applications themselves are what are in fact exchanged in a credit exchange and sold. And later on, if you look at the alongs to those notes, you'll see that the note was sold three days before you signed the note, and that's how. It was sold at the application, at the, at the form of application 
for registration. And of course, this goes back into Australia. This is 1883, but there's nothing new under the sun. The same forms of registration, the same system of admiralty, the same system of waters of commerce. And you can get great insight into it by reading Benedict on Admiralty, which is included in the handout. Okay. Now there's another form of title that we're very familiar with. These are deeds, and there's even a mortgage in here. Still in rule number three, all of commerce is based on title. This is a form of title. We're going to get into greater detail about how these forms of title are created and how they apply in real estate, but we will be limited as to what we can cover because I don't want to interfere with commerce, but at the same time, I do want to give you some great insight into these deeds and these titles. And title is how the physical reality and living beings are dragged into this illusionary world of commerce of admiralty. So you have these waters of admiralty and the illusionary world of commerce, and that transition between them is these titles, these MSOs, these MCOs these deeds, these mortgages, and other contracts. Okay, um, next slide, here we go. This is where it gets good. Here we have a ship. Now it's hard to get really cool pictures of ships that were used originally for discovering new land and for spreading this system of admiralty because they didn't have good cameras back then apparently. But what happens is you have an investor, like a king, and the king goes along and he invests in new expeditions, new ships that are going to go out to discover new land. And when they discover these new lands, they're going to land upon the land. And the first thing they do after they land upon the land is they'll beat up all the locals that are there, just in case anyone objects to them being there or objects to them usurping title. They'll just beat up everybody there, kind of beat them into submission. Then they send out a surveyor. And I'm sure you've heard the concept of being king that all, of all that you survey, right? So the ship has landed, the troops have gone out from the ship, and they've dragged the surveyor along, and the surveyor is surveying everything. The next thing that happens is the king is out there in commerce and he is leasing out his interests in the survey. This has nothing to do with the earth because that original title for the earth is not ours, right? We're going to cover that original MSO and the title for the earth here in a little bit. But if that's not ours, then what are we engaging in commerce? If we're talking about real estate or if we're talking about the buying and selling of land, read a title insurance policy sometime. It'll blow your mind. The title company is actually insuring someone's interest in the survey. Nothing to do with the land, nothing to do with any of the improvements on the land, nothing to do with the earth in particular. The land and landing have to do with a survey, and this is how they engage in commerce. It's really quite brilliant. If you didn't create the earth and you're not going to buy and sell any portion of the earth, you have to create the illusion that you're buying and selling an interest in the earth and get everyone else to go along with you, right? Of course, if they don't go along, you can always beat them up like they did uh, the locals that they found there. So here's our surveyor. He's got to be out there surveying because we're going to buy and sell interests in a survey. Believe it or not, there's actually a website that you can go to where you can buy land on the moon. Don't know what you're going to do with the land on the moon because you don't, you don't, you don't ever get to go there or we don't think we'll be able to get to go there, right? The reason that you can buy and sell land on the moon is the same that you can buy and sell land on Earth. And that is that once you have a survey, all they're doing is buying and selling the interest in the survey. Survey is key to all of it. Now we've all heard of land being sold by lot. Land being sold by lot is different from a survey. If we're discussing land from our landing, it is always so many feet by so many feet and part of such and such survey or such and such meridian or, or such and such uh, grid, triangle, etc. When land is sold by lot, it's a little bit different. What happens is you have a corporation come along called a subdivision. And that corporation ends up holding the interest in the original survey. So it holds an interest in so many feet by so many feet by so many feet. And in exchange, it is divided up into corporate stock. And that corporate stock is des described by lot. 
So you'll have lot number one through 300 of subdivision such and such. Now, when you hold an interest in the corporate stock, it's different than holding an interest in the survey because the one that holds the interest in the survey actually has a higher position in title than you do. That has to do with first in line and first in time. And if you read scripture, buying and selling of land by lot is almost a curse. And it's one of the things to look for in the end times. What they're telling you is, is you're not even worthy to hold an interest in the survey. So instead, we're going to give you an interest in corporate stock and give the corporation, this dead corp body, a higher position and title than you. Title insurance policies. So we covered this just a little bit earlier. A title insurance policy is really interesting to read. What you have is a title insurance company that agrees to insure someone's interest in a description, whether it be that corporate stock or whether it's that land survey. The buying and selling of land, we also covered that you can actually buy land on the moon. There's a website and it's based on a survey of the moon conducted from an alleged landing based on the Apollo missions. They're a little giggling, I know. Um, wasn't there, I don't know if they landed or not. Can't tell you they did, so we're not gonna discuss that. What we're gonna say is that there was an alleged landing. You can go from an alleged landing to an alleged survey, and then you can buy and sell interest in that survey. And you can even get title insurance for your interest in that survey. Dock, dock tour, and waters of commerce, which we covered earlier. How the dock is the guy who keeps charge of the vessels that are parked on the waters of commerce. And all those vessels that get parked on the waters of commerce have to be parked in a berth. The birth certificate. This is the copy of the proof of what property is parked at that berth. All forms of title. The manufacturer's statement of origin, rules one and two. We did cover those in pretty great detail. Manufacturer's statement of origin, it's like Billy Lane. I just created that. I just made that. That's an MSO. If you make a car or a motorcycle in your garage and you actually decide you have to register it, you go down to the DMV and you explain that you've made this creation and now you want to register it, they will hand you a form, one of those applications for registration, and it will go on to say that I so-and-so declare that I created X vehicle, and you will describe it in great detail. That's the new MSO, which you give to the DMV. The DMV gets to register your creation, your collateral. They will give you an exchange, manufacturer certificate of origin, and then they will go on to tell you how you get to use their creation. <laughs> Applying 10 rules. You can apply these 10 rules to every form of contract in commerce from credit cards, to vehicle loans, to house loans, to any form of credit exchange, to just using your own private credit in commerce. And unfortunately, even though I would love to go into really great detail on a lot of this, this isn't the appropriate forum to do that because once again, we cannot stand up on a pedestal in a slave plantation and tell slaves on that plantation that they don't have to go to work today or that you don't have to work in the fields today because that is a form of interfering with commerce. Gold chain round your neck, nothing to me. Diamonds in your teeth, nothing to me. You could be rolling 22s, nothing to me. You're listening down with the truth, now that's something to me. Know thyself, seek and ye shall find. I tell you this now, it's in no African mind. Searching diamonds, gold, silver, platinum, them the kind of things, illusions you fathom. Yeah, they call it magic, right? Your rap is tragic, I know. Clever what they done, fantastic. Come against me now, you end up in a straight jacket. I'll prove you illiterate. One question, the language. Now who's the pickle in the sandwich? This kind of knowledge that you're hearing will damage you, destroy you. Don't worry, I'll employ you, get you back on track, so you can defend your own attack. Gold chains round your neck, nothing to me. Diamonds in your teeth, nothing to me. You could be rolling 22s, nothing to me.